Welcome to Social Media Business, the podcast that covers building, managing, and monetizing social media. Brought to you by online community strategist, Laurel Patworth. For more information, go to laurelpatworth.com. Hi. Today is the um, re-spill, which is where our Prime Minister Julia Gillard and our ex-Prime Minister Kevin Rudd are going to put to the caucus or to the government um, and ask them to vote which one they would rather have as Prime Minister. And in Australian terms, we're calling this a spill, or in fact, this time it's a re-spill because it's happened before. The challenge, I think, that's facing uh, us today is that the representational democracy is broken down. In Greek times, it was really important that every village send a, or vote for a representative that would then go to the nearest large city and vote on the major issues. So there was a really linear relationship between the problem, the communication, and then the outcome. It was um, identify the problem, vote on it, travel, and then have an outcome. We don't need that anymore because government is working its way from being government as a service, so we vote them in and they perform the services for us, to government as a platform, where we all work together and um, not just vote on issues and communicate on issues, but actually work to resolve issues collaboratively together. Think of um, Kickstarter, but in a, in a government framework. Government as a platform means that the popularity contest that we're used to having with representatives really break down. Now, the real failure with the re-spill uh, issue has been that when the first spill happened, both the government and the media admit that they never talked to the Australian public about what a toxic boss Kevin Mudd appears to have been. Now, um, I have no real preference between Julia and Kevin Rudd, uh, except possibly, possibly Julia. Um, but I don't really care either way. So what I'm going to say is just what I see on Twitter and, and in newspapers. If Kevin is as toxic as they say, then that should have been communicated early and it should have been communicated clearly because we have a disconnect now between the village, the community believing Kevin is this all-round nice guy who chats, very chatty and has a great um, media presence and there's a disconnect between that and, a, and an ineffective, despotic, tyrannical, erratic boss that is now being portrayed as being both through the media and through uh, supporters and, and even uh, the non-Julia Gillard supporters, even the Kev Kevin Rudd supporters are saying he's changed, which means he's changed from one from a toxic boss to non-toxic. By the way, toxic bosses don't have to be abusive. They can just be um, disrespectful or uh, not listening. They don't have to be uh, uh, screaming at you all the time, they can um, simply ask you to work all day and all night on something and then ignore it, which apparently is what's the sort of thing that have been happening. What I would say is, as we move away from representational democracy into um, social, uh, a sort of a, like, what would you call it, a social polit political structure, and as people become uh, responsible for all of the things in their it, 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 that government looks after at the moment, whether it's health or fixing local areas, you know, all the sort of cha massive changes that are already happening uh, in meta-government or uh, Gov 3.0, um, we will move away from this cult of personality. And uh, just on one final point, the real failure here is not so much with government communicating with media, it's government communicating with the people, and they had another channel. They had social media. And yet there was no real discussions in social media for the longest time about how impossible it's been to get things done uh, in government uh, through Kevin Rudd. If the media is failing in this very basic tenet of the fourth estate, uh, which is to provide an independent voice on about what's happening between you know the village and the people they've voted in in their village or the community and who they've voted in, then the media really needs to relook at the role that they play and their um, their overarching question of course today is does media have a role and it, it still does if government refuses to use social media to do anything other than the straight testimonial I mean on Twitter you've got um, 
really four different things you can do on Twitter. You can make testimonials or statements. I'm meeting with this minister. I'm, I've got a new press release or something along those lines. You can do social, social search and polling. So whereas I might ask, uh, instead of saying I, I'm having a tuna sandwich for lunch, I might say, where should I go for lunch today? And that's a social search and it gets lots of people involved. Um, government could do, use uh, social media for polling and asking and bridging that communication gap. What do you think of this? Is there any improvements we could make? I really think government is allergic to the questions. They're really big on having the answers, but they're not so big on understanding the questions. And that's what social media offers, is the opportunity to understand the questions. Um, the third thing that Twitter and other social media sites do, besides this uh, social search and also testimonials, is uh, distribution. So there's internal distribution, which is the Facebook share, of a Facebook or like of a Facebook item, or there's on Twitter it's the retweet, and then there's the external distribution, which is um, uh, tweet this and Facebook this from an external site. So you'll see on Twitter, here's a great article in the Sydney Morning Herald, or here's a great blog post, or here's a stupid video on, on YouTube. And um, I guess the last one is really to work uh, in a way together not um so if, so if the last thing is conversation the at symbol where you have toing and froing between people it's not open-ended polling it's a real you know at Turnbull Malcolm or at K Rudd MP and then they respond back and you respond back and remembering that it's not the one-on-one -on -one conversation that's important it's the invisible audience so even though Kevin Rudd may have used a, an auto follower system to to connect to um, million or so people, maybe not the right people, but he's connected to them. Uh, it's really the interaction, the quality of the interaction that happens. You can have lots of people sign up for your newsletter. It doesn't mean that they're opening it and they're taking an action on it. And that's where social politics is really falling down. It's that call to action, that engagement. Um, maybe they're, everybody's listening and everybody's chatting over here. And then the politicians are sending out their testimonials and their statement over here, and they're being perhaps retweeted one way, but there's definitely no real engagement happening. So that's my take on the reschool today. Thank you. Welcome to Social Media Business, the podcast that covers building, managing, and monetizing social media. Brought to you by online community strategist Laurel Patworth. For more information, go to laurelpatworth.com. Dot com.